Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. So excited to be bringing you today's video where I'm going to make 10 items for this tiered tray house. These are going to be fall tiered tray ideas. The first thing we're gonna make are some letter blocks. I'm using four of these wood cubes from Dollar Tree, but you could also use the foam dice, some scrapbook paper, and some poster letters. I am going to be using four or five basic paint colors. I will list these in the description of the video. And I also was inspired by a couple different patterns of fall scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these blocks. Obviously you can see they were painted white because you buy these natural colored. I am repurposing these for today's project. And I am going to paint all of the sides with Waverly chalk paint in the color Agave. Now I measure these and they're about two and a quarter inches on each side. So I'm gonna be using two of my blocks are going to be having this patterned uh, plaid paper. These are in the eight and a half by 11 sheets at Hobby Lobby. So I'm cutting two two inch squares. And then look at this gorgeous floral in these fall colors. I love this so much. I'm gonna do two squares out of this paper as well at two inches by two inches. So we're gonna have one square of paper on each of our blocks. Now I'm just gonna sand these lightly so that our Mod Podge and our paper will stick nicely to them. The great thing about making these blocks for tiered trays is you can turn them and use them for multiple seasons or holidays. I'm gonna put a little bit of Mod Podge on the top of each of my blocks brush that out to make it nice and smooth, spritz a little bit of water on the back of my paper, and then center that on the face of the block. So you can see I've got about an eighth of an inch margin all the way around the paper where you can see the agave paint color. Once that Mod Podge and paper are dry, I'm gonna take my poster sticker letters from Dollar Tree, and I'm going to put one letter on each block to spell the word fall. Now, if you wanted to make six blocks, you could make your blocks spell autumn instead. The great thing about these poster letters is if you get them in the wrong place, you're pretty much able to peel them off and reposition them. But because of that, we are going to put some Mod Podge over the top of our stickers and paper just to make sure nothing peels off. And here's what our blocks look like added to our tiered tray house. Next, we're gonna make a faux mini book stack. We're gonna use a wood crate from Dollar Tree, more of that gorgeous paper. I'm using agave, pumpkin, and moss for my paint colors, and some teal sticker letters that I had in my stash. So we're going to use some painter's tape so we can tape off the separate spine sections of our crate to be the different books in our book stack. And first I'm going to use agave on this top section of our book stack. I'm gonna do just the front where the spine would be and then the very top. Once that section's dry, I'm gonna put another piece of painter's tape to tape off the bottom spine or the bottom book of our stack. And I'm gonna use moss to paint just the spine of this bottom book. Then we'll use two more pieces of painter's tape to tape off the middle book in our stack and I'm going to use pumpkin to paint the spine of this middle book. Next, I'm gonna measure the top of our book stack and I'm going to cut a piece of that floral scrapbook paper at five inches and two and three quarter inches. This is gonna give us a nice border of that agave paint showing around our scrapbook paper.
Next, I'm going to use these sticker letters from my stash. I'm going to do welcome to our patch. There's so many different things. You can put pumpkins, hayrides, cider, apples, all sorts of sayings on your fall book stack. But like I said, I'm going to do welcome to our patch. And then again, we're going to seal in our stickers with a little bit of Mod Podge, brushing it lightly over each of our stickers and the entire spines of our book stack. Now you can leave the rest of your book stack plain if you'd like. I decided to go ahead and paint mine with ivory. It didn't really change the color of the crate a whole lot, but this would be like where the pages are. And then if you'd like, you can draw a line where each of the individual books would start and stop. I didn't worry about doing that because this is just gonna be sitting on a tiered tray anyway. So use your ivory paint or whatever color you'd like to paint the pages of your books. To finish off my mini book stack, I'm gonna use a little bit of this orange gingham ribbon from Hobby Lobby. I'm just gonna glue a little bit of it on the inside of my crate, wrap it once around that left side of my book stack, trim it and glue the other side inside the book stack. You could use jute twine for this. I, I liked incorporating this particular ribbon kind of throughout my DIY projects for this fall tiered tray house. It just kind of gave some cohesiveness along with the paint colors to all of my projects. I'm just going to glue a faux leaf on the top and one of these big sunflower stickers from Dollar Tree. Then I have made a small little bow using that same ribbon that I'm going to glue on top as well. And here's our fall house tiered tray with the book stack added. Next, we're gonna make a mini pennant banner. I have these little MDF shapes that I purchased online, two more of those sunflower stickers and another piece of that plaid scrap of paper. I'm first going to paint all three of my little pennants here with the color moss. Next, I'm going to take this strip of the scrap of paper and I'm tracing the shape of the pennant banner and then I'm cutting it out just a little bit smaller so that when I attach it to the front of the pennant banner, I will have a little bit of border showing the moss green paint. So just trimming now around the two sides and I'll also trim a little bit off the top and then I'm going to put some Mod Podge on my little MDF banner piece and Mod Podge this scrap of paper right to the front of this middle pennant banner piece. Now to my other two pieces, I'm gonna glue one of these large sunflower stickers to the center of the banner piece. Then when all my pieces are dry, I'm just gonna take some jute twine and I'm gonna string my three banner pieces together using the twine. And here's the house with the little banner added up to the top right. I just used a couple pieces of packing tape to tape it on. Next, we're gonna be adding some beaded tags. I bought these two at Hobby Lobby. They were retail priced $1.49 each, so probably about a buck a piece. I'm going to use hazelnut and pumpkin paint, and I'm also going to use a couple of my fall mini stencils from Magnolia, which you can find at monarchmomdiy.com. So for the pumpkin shape, I am going to use Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. And for the leaf, I'm going to use the color hazelnut. Now I did paint these on the fronts and then once those were completely dried, I did turn them over and paint them on the back side as well. Okay. 
Once they were dry, I did sand the front sides of each shape gently because I will be stenciling on them. These would definitely look cute added to your tiered tray without the mini stencils on them, but I thought it would be fun to just add a little bit of wording. So I'm doing fall vibes on the pumpkin and it's fall y'all on the leaf. I'm just gonna use white chalk paint for both of these. For the final touch on these beaded tags is I'm just going to add a small bow using that same ribbon. And here they are kind of hanging out of two of the drawers of our house tiered tray. Next, we're gonna decorate a mini rolling pin to go with our theme. I'm gonna use this rolling pin that obviously I had painted before, but we're gonna change it up and this beautiful fall floral paper along with that same ribbon. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take agave and I'm going to give it a coat covering over the previous color that I had painted this and then we'll let that dry and then we'll come back in and we'll paint the handles of our rolling pin. Before we can paint the handles, I'm gonna go ahead and use painter's tape to tape off what we just painted with agave, just so we don't get any of the pumpkin orange paint onto the middle of our rolling pin. Next, I'm gonna measure the center of our rolling pin here, and then I'm going to cut a strip of the floral scrapbook paper so that I can Mod Podge it onto the center of our rolling pin. It looks like I'm cutting it at three and a quarter inches. That's gonna give us a little bit of the agave showing. And then I just kind of rolled it over and measured how long it would need to be to be able to wrap all the way around and then not have too much excess. I'm just gonna roll it here in my hand a little bit to get the paper to kind of form to the shape of the rolling pin and then we'll Mod Podge it on. For the finishing touch of our rolling pin, you guessed it, we're gonna use some of that gingham ribbon from Hobby Lobby. This time we're just gonna tie it in a knot and trim off the little edges. Just give it a little knotted piece of ribbon on either end. And here's our house tiered tray now with the rolling pin added as well. Next, we're gonna make a little shelf sitter shape using one of these chunky scrolled rectangles from Dollar Tree, some pumpkin orange paint, and a rub-on transfer and stencil from Magnolia. So this is just one of these wood hanging decors. I'm going to just sand the rough edges a little bit, and then we're gonna paint this entire thing with our pumpkin Waverly chalk paint. Then once that's dry, I am going to sand it lightly since we're going to be adding a rub-on transfer and a stencil as well. I just also like it kind of gives it a little bit more of a worn kind of rustic look. So sanding that and then wiping off some excess dust before we get our rub-on transfer and our stencil going. 
Now these are some Harvest Pumpkin rub-on transfers. I'm just going to try to make sure I have space to put this word harvest on here. So I'm gonna choose my rub-on transfer and burnish it on until it is nice and stuck down to our block. I love how that looks with the rub-on transfer hanging off the bottom. Then I'm gonna take my Harvest stencil and center it where I would like it. And then I decided to use glittering copper, but as you're gonna see here, when I peel and reveal, it did not um, stand out as much as I would like from the orange background. So I'm gonna go back over it with fern green, and I like that much better. And the last step is to make a small bow using that gingham ribbon. And we're gonna glue this to our shelf sitter on the left side there to cover up the hole from where we removed the hanger. And here it is added to our house tiered tray. Next, we're gonna make a mini lantern or actually decorate a mini lantern. These are usually found at Dollar Tree in the wood section. We're just gonna use some hazelnut and agave paint and a little leaf to just decorate this to go with our tiered tray decor so far. So we're gonna paint the body of the lantern with agave. Next, I'm gonna use hazelnut to paint the top and bottom sections of the lantern. Once our paint is dry, I'm just gonna take one of these mini faux leaves, actually two of them, and we're gonna glue these to the top of our lantern. I am going to cut off the little hanger there. I'm gonna cut it as close as I can to the top and then pull the rest of it out from the inside there. We're gonna put two leaves at the top and then a little sunflower. We'll also add a bow with our orange gingham ribbon. And here's our fall tiered tray house now with the lantern added as well. Next, we're gonna make a little mini clipboard with a red truck on it. We're gonna use one of these little ornaments and one of these little clip wood clipboards from the photo frame section. So basically all I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna take one of these truck ornaments, remove it from the backing. I'm gonna remove the little wire hanger that makes it hang as an ornament. And then we're gonna attach it to the front of this clipboard. And I hope you can see because of the decoration, I needed to put a little piece of wood there so that I could glue the truck and have it be flat. I did cut a little bit of the foam pumpkin off and I'm gonna remove that burlap ribbon um, bow that's on there and guess what we're gonna add? Yep, we're gonna add a bow using the orange gingham ribbon.
And here's our fall tier tray house with our little red truck clipboard, probably the simplest project in this whole video. The last one we're gonna make is a little decorated mini scoop using one of these wood mini scoops from Hobby Lobby, some mini pine cones, mini foam pumpkins, and I'm gonna use one of these mini sunflower stickers from Dollar Tree as well. I'm first going to paint my wood scoop here with the color moss. Then we're just gonna add an orange gingham bow at the top and we're gonna start gluing in one of these little foam pumpkins. This was actually from the truck ornaments we used in the last project. And I have these really teeny tiny pine cones. I believe they were from Hobby Lobby. And then I'm gonna cut just one of the heads off one of these mini sunflowers and stick this up here next to the bow. I'm gonna end up putting three mini pine cones and two of the mini pumpkins in our little scoop. And there's our little scoop of harvest goodness. And that completes our tiered tray decor here for our house-shaped tiered tray using just crates, no wood drawers. If you guys missed that video, I will link it here at the end where you can go to see how I made this tiered tray house that you can change up for any season or holiday. Thanks so much for joining me, everyone. Please let me know in the comments what you thought of this video, which was your favorite little DIY for the tiered tray house, and we'll see you next time. Take care.